We are happy to have Sasha here giving the talk, and um, Uwe will have a short introduction of our today's speaker. Uwe, please. Yeah, hello. Thank you, thank you, Martin. Uh, yeah, I welcome you to to the seminar talk of uh, Professor Alexander Chuk. He's our uh, presenter today, um, and he is a theoretical physicist and a cosmologist and a particle physicist from uh, the Astronomical Observatory as well as the um, Mechnikov uh, National University in, uh, in Odessa. Um, he earned his, his PhD in uh, the Moscow Engineering Physical Institute, which is one of the most noticeable technical universities in Russia. Uh, and at the time, he was also at the Lebedev uh, Physical Institute also in Moscow. Um, his, his defense from the, uh, for, the, for the Doctor of Science, similar to the, to the habilita habilitation in, in Germany, um, he did at a Bogolibov Institute uh, for Theoretical Physics in Kiev. Um, yeah, he was uh, visiting professor around the world, um, most notably uh, in Cambridge uh, under the supervision of Stephen Hawking. Some of you know, know this person maybe. Uh, then he was in Princeton, Princeton University, and Columbia University, uh, in several universities in Berlin, Cologne, Istanbul, Munich, Madrid, Lisbon, and so on. Um, he was for quite a long time, 12 years, uh, as a senior associate in the International Center of Theoretical Physics in Trieste. And uh, he was also a visiting scientist at CERN for the last 12 years. Uh, and today he want to give us uh, like some insights in uh, the relativistic approach for large scale structure formations in the universe, uh, where he shows us some comparison between cosmic screening and uh, devolution. And with that, uh, I give it to you, Sasha, and I'm happy to see you. Uh, thank you very much, Uwe, for a very good uh, introduction. <laughs> it's too much for me. <laughs> uh, but uh, before to start uh, this talk, I, I, I think I need to tell a few words about Ukraine, because now, of course, yeah. it's a very hard time uh, for Ukraine. And uh, just this night, uh, the rocket uh, hit uh, 200 meters from our uh, house. Fortunately, our building was not uh, damaged, but a lot of windows uh, were uh, broken. And it was just uh, a big shopping center. You know? It was not military base. So Putin and his army, they are completely crazy. And we should stop uh, him. And uh, we should win. We, we are strong and we should win. And I would like to send uh, to thank also uh, Casos for invitation me. Now, of course, my family is uh, in safety place and uh, I have very good uh, possibility to work. So uh, thank you very much for this uh, very nice uh, possibility. Uh, and now I would like to turn to my talk and uh, I would like to speak about uh, the universe. And the universe is a very uh, complex system consisting of uh, billion and billion uh, particles, and from this point, I think topics in uh, some kind of <laughs> close to the topic of uh, the castles. And uh, formation of the large scale structure of the universe, one of the uh, major uh, uh, problem of the uh, modern uh, cosmology. And uh, our group uh, started to, to investigate this uh, problem uh, approximately 10 years ago. And the group is uh, international. And for example, uh, the result which I will present uh, today, uh, it, uh, it was obtained in col collaboration with uh, Maxim and Gorg from North Carolina, uh, Carolina uh, Central University. And uh, two uh, postgraduate uh, guys, it's uh, not guys and girls also, uh, Emra Yuxelji and Esgi uh, Janain from Istanbul Technical uh, University. And, uh, and due to the modern telescope, uh, for example, uh, uh, it's a, a slow digital uh, sky survey telescope. It's a 2.5 meter wide angle uh, optical telescope at Apache Point Observatory in New Mexico. We uh, can see that the uh, universe is filled with a cosmic web, which uh, is composed of Inter interconnected filaments of uh, galaxies uh, separated by a gi giant of voids. Yeah. Now, uh, for example, a uh, left picture, it shows the result of uh, observation from uh, Sloan G Digital uh, Sky Survey. 
and uh, you can uh, clearly see it as this uh, filaments and voids here. It's just from observation. And uh, uh, right uh, picture shows in body simulation. Here we also see this uh, filaments, and we also see uh, this uh, voids. And uh, as I told, the um, emergence of uh, this large scale structure is one of the major challenges. Uh, ch challenges of modern uh, cosmology. Uh, there are uh, different ways to study uh, such a large scale structure. Uh, we can uh, divide it in uh, two uh, parts. First, it's uh, analytical methods. Uh, it's uh, well described in books by Barkin, uh, Mohano, or Bukov and uh, Garbodon. Uh, this analytical uh, approach works well in linear regime where the density contrast is uh, small. Uh, such uh, condition works at early stage of evolution of the universe or large scale of the late universe. Uh, we also apply numerical simulation, and this numerical simulation works well in non-linear regime too, when the density of contrast is large. And we know that gravity is a main closer to form of this large scale structure. Uh, we can use, for example, the Newtonian approach, and in this case, we can use uh, Newtonian and body simulation. And, uh, for example, one of the most famous such code, uh, it is the gadget 2 code. But uh, there is a, a number of drawbacks. This approach uh, does not uh, take into account the relativistic effects at large cosmological scales. Uh, it's also not uh, applicable for objects with relativistic equilibrium. Uh, it's also problematic to apply the Newtonian approach to theories beyond the lambda CDM model. Uh, lambda CDM model is a standard model of uh, cosmology, where the main uh, uh, part, uh, the main uh, matter, it is the lambda term, which provides uh, this uh, uh, accelerated expansion. This is uh, the, uh, roughly speaking, is uh, our uh, dark uh, energy and uh, cold dark matter. So the standard model is uh, lambda uh, CDM. For lambda CDM, we can apply the Newtonian approach, but if you uh, would like to consider more general uh, uh, theories, uh, in this case, it's quite uh, problematic uh, to use this approach. It's also not uh, uh, appropriate for calculation the effect of a black reaction or perturbation on matter. So it is, uh, in this case, it is necessary to use general relativity and to construct uh, characteristic and body cosmological simulation on the background of general relativity. And uh, here we can uh, divide it in, into two steps. First, we should uh, uh, prepare our equation um, on the background of general relativity. This is the first step. And usually it's a series of perturbation because uh, Gravitational field is uh, weak at all scales uh, except of uh, in vicinity of uh, neutron stars or uh, black holes. Uh, and the second step, when we have such equation, we can uh, start uh, a body cosmological uh, simulation. Uh, now I would like to uh, tell a little bit about the first steps. So uh, prepare of the equations. Uh, in my talk, I will speak about the uh, cosmic screening approach and about the uh, evolution approach. So uh, I would like to exp uh, explain uh, what does it mean the cos cosmic screening approach. Uh, according to the Copernicus, Copernicus principle or uh, cosmic principle, our universe at large scale is uh, homogeneous and uh, isotropic. And uh, to describe such universe, we use uh, usually Friedman uh, metric. And here is uh, you see, oops. Uh, this, uh, if we uh, drop these red terms, we have a metric, uh, uh, it's a Friedman metric uh, with a flat uh, space. And uh, uh, energy in this case, uh, background, uh, uh, for background model, depends only on time. This is the, our background model. But we know that uh, at scales, uh, uh, Smaller scales, we can see the galaxies, we can see a group of galaxies. So in general, our universe is not completely homogeneous, not completely isotropic. And all of this in homogeneous, they uh, perturb, uh, uh, they perturb matrix, so it, they perturb space-time, and also uh, perturb uh, matter. 
Uh, the perturbation uh, now I would like to consider only a scalar perturbation. So these uh, guys uh, phi and uh, psi, uh, oops, uh, phi and psi, they are scalar function is a perturbation of our background matrix, and the psi is uh, uh, directly connected with gravitational uh, potential. Uh, we know that gravitational potential is small or uh, near at all scales, uh, and. Uh, in this case, we can use uh, perturbation uh, approach. So we, you, uh, we can put inside of uh, Einstein equation the, our matrix, and uh, we arrive to, to the system of uh, linearized Einstein equation. In the case of uh, uh, Friedman uh, metric, we have only three, uh, is a set of three equations. Uh, left hand side is uh, described the uh, perturbation of space time, and right hand side uh, described the perturbation of uh, uh, matter. And uh, we consider uh, contact matter uh, as a set of point like uh, inhomogeneities. So it is a galaxy, group of uh, and cluster of galaxies. We consider just only a slight, uh, as a point like uh, particles. In this case, uh, energy momentum tends uh, to the famous expression well known you can find it in uh, this textbook by Landau and Lipschitz and uh, uh, here it's a uh, peculiar velocity in cosmology we have the two type of velocity one velocity which is uh, connected with uh, uh, evolution of the universe we can consider universe for example as a sphere and it's a uh, balloon uh, Expanding the balloon, and uh, if, for example, we have a galaxy which pin strictly to this balloon, uh, they move only with respect to each other uh, because of evolution of the universe. Uh, but they not spin directly; they uh, interact with each other, and they can also move uh, uh, additionally. And this additional uh, movement is described with this. Uh, with the help of a peculiar velocity. So in total, the velocity, total velocity is a sum of uh, Hubble velocity plus this uh, peculiar velocity. And peculiar velocity also usually uh, uh, all very small. So gravitational of our uh, uh, weak field approximation means that the gravitational potential is small and peculiar velocity also small. And we, uh, uh, again, it's very important that the uh, engine momentum turns and depends on metric. And we have seen before that metric depends on gravitational uh, potential. Uh, so we would like now uh, to see the perturbation of, well, for example, zero zero component, which uh, describes energy moment and density, energy uh, uh, density. And we see the energy density uh, depends on not only uh, fluctuation of matter density, but appears this guy. And this, uh, uh, it, it is very important, and this guy appears because of interaction, gravitational potential, and uh, matter, the ground matter. If the ground matter goes to zero, we don't have this uh, the ground, uh, uh, this guy disappears uh, completely. And again, it's uh, very important for us. Uh, we didn't uh, demand that uh, uh, fluctuation of matter should be small. It should be a uh, flotation, should be much bigger than uh, average value. Uh, it does not contradict our uh, proposal that uh, gravitational potential is small because we, we know that uh, uh, for large fluctuation, for large fluctuation, for example, in the vicinity of galaxy or in the vicinity of our star, sun, uh, fluctuations might be the average value in the universe, but gravitational potential at the same time is small. Uh, and for us, it's important that our approach works at all scales, from a relative to small astrophysical scales to larger cosmological scales. And now we arrived to our equation, the first the zero zero component of Einstein equation, and this uh, zero over one for example uh, component and uh, in the right hand side i uh, include this uh, flotation uh, of the energy density and we see that uh, uh, just for simplicity i consider the case when uh, i will not uh, take into account peculiar velocity it's just for simplicity after that we will include it into account so uh, this combination uh, 
this com combination is exactly this guy it's equal to zero and uh, we arrive to the following equation for uh, gravitational potential so instead of uh, newtonian uh, uh, just the Poisson equation we have this additional uh, term and we arrive to Helmholtz equation and we know that uh, for Helmholtz equation the solution is not a uh, uh, Newtonian potential but it's Yukawa potential and this is a screen glance it's described uh, uh, it gives a characteristic uh, range of uh, uh, for the gravitational potential. This is the exact solution of our Helmholtz equation. And you see, uh, for the usual uh, Newtonian gravity, we have this term. And now it appears such additional term, exponential uh, uh, cutoff. And I uh, told that this exact solution without taking into account peculiar velocity, we can uh, took it, it into account just so we need only to replace this one third to uh, this guy. Uh, and uh, in, this, in this case, it's effective uh, screening of length. So it's uh, uh, less after that, which uh, gravitational uh, iteration uh, exponentially uh, cut off. And again, it's uh, you see we have this one third. It's also uh, important because uh, you know, this gravitational potential, it's, uh, it's linear fluctuation, and uh, average value for linear fluctuation should be equal to zero. And if you calculate the average value of this sum, the exact, including all this, including this prefactor, it will exactly equals to one third. So they cancel each other. So average value of perturbation is equal to zero. So this one third is important for, in our case. And just to have an uh, idea, how large is this uh, screen length? Uh, at present time, uh, first it depends on uh, time. A is a scale factor. Oh, roughly speaking, it uh, looks like a radius of the ball if our universe is a ball. And uh, we know that uh, 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 universe is ex ex expand with time, so uh, scale factor A depends on time also. and. Uh, it's so difficult to use our pointer. <laughs> okay, so you see that uh, characteristic value uh, for uh, screen lens it's uh, this uh, two point uh, across to the six uh, giga per sec for this uh, uh, billion, uh, eight, eight, eight billion of uh, light years or in centimeters. So you see this uh, figure. And uh, ah, it's a very interesting because that's the largest structure in the universe, which we can see. It's a great uh, uh, gamma ray uh, burst wall. And it has a pro oh, this uh, value between two and three uh, giga uh, uh, per cell. Uh, but if our gravitational potential uh, described by the Yukawa potential uh, and have this uh, exponential cutoff, uh, the uh, structure bigger than this uh, screen lens uh, should not exist. And you see that it's uh, uh, this observation uh, good, uh, is in good agreement with our uh, cutoff lens. Uh, and again, uh, to, uh, I would like to uh, compare the size of this uh, uh, screening lens. 2.6 giga per sec with the observable part of the universe. Observable part of the universe is the, described by a uh, particle horizon. Uh, this is the farthest distance that any uh, photon can freely stream from the big bang. This is a uh, real size of the observable universe. And it, it is 14.3 uh, giga per sec. And uh, inside of the box uh, of this size, we can see approximately 171 volume of Yukawa uh, And uh, uh, this I will not. Now, I would like to, uh, uh, just now I would like to describe why we uh, call this uh, uh, screening approach because we see that our gravitational potential is this, uh, uh, described by not uh, Yukawa potential, but uh, not uh, 
Newton potential, but uh, you cover potential with uh, exponential uh, screening. So this uh, we call this uh, uh, screening approach. Uh, now I would like to, to speak about uh, another approach. It is called evolution approach, and the author of this approach is uh, Atomic, uh, the, the way you're in Kunz from uh, Geneva University. It was uh, published in this uh, paper in uh, uh, Nature of Physics. And uh, what they did, they uh, considered also a perturbed uh, Friedman uh, metric and include now I will also include uh, in my uh, consideration uh, vector perturbation and they uh, uh, obtain a set of equations. Uh, in the uh, approach, they include not, on, not only linear terms, but also uh, quadratic uh, terms in uh, scalar uh, perturbations. And uh, here we also uh, uh, see uh, energy momentum tensor, different components of energy momentum tensor. They also include quadratic terms here. And you see that uh, the form of equation much more complicated than our cases. And uh, this relativistic code gives us possibility uh, to uh, uh, define or determine uh, the gravitational potential, also not a Newtonian degrees of freedom, no metric, it's a, a scalar uh, degree of freedom. Uh, and vector potential, also uh, tensor uh, perturbation. It means that the tensor perturbation that describes gravitational waves. Uh, however, the equation in this code include not only linear terms, but also those which are quadratic in scalar perturbations. You have seen it already. As a, as a result, uh, all this correction, uh, I mean, on phi, psi, b, as a uh, it also uh, admixture uh, second order uh, quant uh, quantities. M mixing of uh, orders of uh, smallness leads to the rather complicated form of equation. Uh, in the screening approach, we, uh, if we uh, go back to this equation, uh, in screening approach, we uh, miss or we uh, we didn't take into account all these red terms and we arrived to much more simple set of equations uh, for equation equation as well as, as, well as for uh, energy momentum tensor and uh, we uh, published this result well, for example i just uh, i uh, show here this uh, three journals and in our uh, approach uh, order of of smallness are not mixed. The first order of quantities are sources for the second order quantities. All equations are linear. In this case, we also increase our possibility to get analytical solution. In the case of the CDM models, these are our standard cosmological models. Uh, it is uh, clear that if you have analytical solution, it's uh, very good for uh, investigations. And the cosmic screen effects is clearly manifest, manifested in this uh, case. So uh, we have uh, two set of equations, uh, equation for in uh, evolution approach, and we also have a uh, set of equation in screening approach. And it is of interest to, to investigate uh, how much the new numerical simulation results differ for these two codes. Uh, so uh, the question uh, of the following, does the evolution and screening codes produce different or almost identical results and which code runs uh, faster? In, uh, this, uh, I, now I would like to present the result of the simulation. Uh, we have conducted a series of cosmological and body simulation in boxes uh, with the following sizes from uh, 280 up to uh, 1680 megaparsec with a resolution of uh, one uh, particle per uh, one uh, megaparsec. We also uh, conducted uh, uh, simulation uh, for boxes with the size up to uh, 2000, uh, up to 2800 megaparsecs with a resolution one particle uh, per uh, two uh, 
megaparsecs. And for example, in in the case if you have uh, one thousand and six hundred eighty megaparsec size, and uh, with the resolution one particle of uh, per megaparsec, we, we will have uh, approximately uh, five billion uh, particles. Of course, uh, uh, to perform such a simulation, we need uh, a supercomputer. And we use, uh, uh, in this case, National Center for High Performance Computing, which is in uh, Istanbul Technical uh, University. And we uh, also uh, investigated, uh, we would like to get uh, cosmological uh, simulation for uh, power spectrum. Just a few words of what is a power spectrum. Power spectrum, it is uh, strict, uh, roughly speaking, it's two point correlation function. Uh, first line shows a, a definition for a two point correlation fu function in a usual coordinate uh, coordinate space. We can, uh, after that, uh, perform a Fourier transform to get a correlation of function in a Fourier space. And this is uh, just a definition uh, to, for two point correlation function in a uh, momentum space or in a Fourier space. Uh, our task uh, is to, to calculate it, uh, this uh, guys. Uh, here, uh, delta is just uh, arbitrary uh, physical value. It uh, can be energy density, it can be uh, gravitational potential, it uh, can be uh, uh, vector potential, uh, for, for example. And if you know uh, power spectrum, then we can uh, 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 we can uh, see and we can uh, calculate uh, characteristic value uh, for uh, this uh, physical values. For example, for energy density, square root of this guy will show you the value of energy density. For example, uh, for uh, definite value of uh, uh, momentum, uh, and momentum also connected with uh, uh, coordinate. Uh, oh, this length. So, if you know uh, the value for uh, momentum space, we also uh, can say that uh, this value just for this value uh, for this uh, value of, uh, uh, of of the distance. So, uh, if you know power spectrum, uh, we can uh, see the dis distribution uh, uh, physical quantities at different uh, scales. This is just in a few years about what is it and why we have calculated power spectrum. And uh, our, our outputs. We calculated power spectrum for gravitational potential. We calculate power spectrum for uh, vector potential. And for this uh, second order, uh, order uh, guys uh, here. And we also uh, can consider uh, uh, relative uh, deviation. And uh, here is the result of our uh, simulation. Uh, just for a box with the size uh, 980 um, megaparsec, per, per and uh, we have uh, we have uh, we considered for two, two uh, uh, redshift for redshift uh, z equals zero. It's uh, present time, and redshift uh, for z equals 15. It means that our universe in uh, approximately approximately in 15 times smaller than our uh, present universe. So we uh, calculated uh, uh, power spectrum for gravitational potential, it's uh, upper uh, curves, uh, middle curves is for vector potential, and uh, uh, bottom curves it's just for this guy here. And uh, uh, for background, but it's uh, difficult to see, but uh, you can believe me that green, blue, and purple curls in the background, they are connected with the evolution approach. And uh, red, orange, and yellow curls in the foreground, uh, they are connected with the screening code. And you see that the uh, curls, they can remarkably, remarkably uh, coincide with each other. This is for box uh, 980, uh, similar uh, picture for box uh, was out 1680. And uh, here, uh, relative deviation and uh, red uh, relative deviation, red curves uh, uh, is uh, connected with uh, red shift equals 15, and purple uh, curves connected with uh, red shift equals zero. 
And we see that uh, maximum deviation, maximum deviation, it uh, takes place at the uh, present time when z equals to zero. And for uh, gravitational potential, it is the less than uh, uh, four uh, hundredths of a person. And for uh, vector potential is less than uh, four tenths of a person, and uh, for uh, he, he, uh, it's uh, less than one uh, person. So deviation is very, very uh, small. And uh, next question is about uh, computational time in uh, central processing unit hours for evolution uh, T uh, sub G and for screening T sub S. Uh, the relative deviation is given in this uh, table. So uh, we see that uh, for all boxes, for all boxes, uh, screening uh, code runs approximately for uh, forty uh, percent uh, faster than the uh, evolution uh, code. So uh, it's uh, in general what I would like to tell uh, today, and this is my uh, summary in conclusion. We have uh, considered two alternative relativistic approaches to the in-body simulation of the universe large scale structure, namely evolution and screening. Both of them, as they determine, determine a non-Newtonian degree of freedom, and they work at all scales, from relatively small astrophysical ones to largest cosmological distances. In the evolution approach, the uh, corresponding to Gertrude Einstein equation have a rather complicated form, since the first and second order of smallness are uh, mixed. And in the screening approach, the per perturbed Einstein equation are greatly simplified, since order of smallness, smallness are clearly se separated from each other. And uh, within each of these uh, approaches, we have conducted a seri series of uh, simulation in boxes of different sizes and resolutions and uh, have calculated the power spectrum of the scale for uh, scalar perturb perturbation, uh, gravitational potential uh, phi, the uh, frame dragging vector potential uh, B, and the quantity uh, psi, uh, phi minus psi. Uh, despite the fact that the evolution uh, quantities uh, phi and B have the second order admixtures, we have demonstrated that the power uh, spectra are in very good agreement between the uh, compared uh, schemes. For example, the relative difference of power spectrum for the gravitational potential is uh, four uh, hundredths of uh, or percent maximum. Uh, hence, the effect of second order mixtures is small, as it sh sh should be. And we have shown that simply the screening code uh, saved almost 40% uh, of uh, uh, CPU hours. It means that uh, we know that uh, the faster uh, code, the cheapest. Uh, should be the uh, project cost. The uh, first conclusion, and uh, we can uh, simulate the larger box for the fixed uh, allotted time for the same uh, amount of money. So, uh, to save uh, energy, to save KPU, we should uh, optimize your equation. Is <laughs> the main conclusion. So, thank you very much. First of all, are there some questions from the audience? Maybe raise your digital hand. Um, if not spontaneous equation, I have a, I have a, a, a question uh, actually. Uh, first of all, if I understand right, in the in the screening approach, you linearize the Einstein's equation, which means this is like a like a far field approximation, is it? Isn't it? No, uh, not uh, it's not far. What do you mean far field? Field yeah. in screening approach is the same as in evolution approach. We use just the smallness of gravitational potential. And it's, it is not uh, how to say our uh, pro, how to say uh, it uh, gravitational potential small nearly at all uh, cosmological and astrophysical scales. Okay. Uh, we just uh, use this smallness and we we put uh, uh, our uh, metric hmm. where it depends on this small uh, parameter, and after that we expand on these small parameters. So it's not far field, it's uh, just a uh, field near this uh, field, for example, near uh, the sun, field near the uh, in the vicinity of a galaxy, or far from the galaxy. 
realistic. If we also for all the scales, uh, we don't consider, for example, the vicinity of black holes for uh, neutron stars. Here, uh, gravitational potential is uh, really uh, big. But for all, all other scales, uh, this uh, approach works. Ah, okay, okay. And then, and then the question is, uh, is there any critical size also uh, where you see the quadratic terms from the uh, devolution approach? So that you see actually some deviation between the linearized model and the, uh, the quadratic terms from the, from the other uh, approach? Or is this just uh, in a different, like in a different approach and it's not, not uh, visible due to uh, the observable you, you on, uh, We can see there's a difference and uh, you can, uh, you can see it's uh, given uh, by this uh, picture. So we can, uh, uh, we can calculate the power spectrum. For example, in our approach, we can calculate the power spectrum in the approach, and we can consider the difference. And uh, the difference we see is just uh, small by this way. If you would like to see the effect of uh, rare screening approach, uh, I think in this case, we should continue our uh, investigation. It's just uh, our next uh, step. Okay, thank you. Is, uh, uh, to see directly this uh, screening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But screening really is a height also in the evolution approach because I told that uh, main, uh, main point here is that gravitational uh, uh, potential uh, depends on uh, uh, so no, uh, energy momentum tensor that depends on gravitational potential. And in uh, Evolution approach, you also see this guy. But it's a uh, uh, complication, uh, the uh, equation much more complicated, and this effect is uh, how to say is hidden there. For them, it's very difficult to see because uh, the equation is much more complicated. Okay, okay. When we separate the uh, uh, order of smallness uh, uh, one um, from another, first order of smallness, second order of smallness, in this case, we can see it's uh, clear. Mm -hmm. In their approach, uh, they, they have it mixtures and it's different, difficult to see uh, directly. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe let me ask an, an, another question, uh, a more speculative one. Um, is it is this uh, one of these approaches, or maybe both, uh, applicable also to uh, space times with negative cosmological constants? For instance, uh, in the framework of ADS CFT or so, to uh, yeah, like calculate large scale power spectra as, as well there. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we can use it without any problem because in our case, lambda term uh, is just uh, the ground term; it does not fluctuate, and uh, this equation is the equation for fluctuation. Uh, mm -hmm. Negative lambda term uh, will uh, affect just only on evolution on the universe. Mm -hmm. So it's affect just the behavior of scale factor. In our uh, case, the scale factor is just a uh, uh, letter, nothing more. Okay. So, and, and... so we can use it to, uh, for any value of lambda. It doesn't matter. Positive, okay. negative. Okay, but but is is there is there uh, any research uh, done in this direction for ADS? Oh, uh, of course, in this case, uh, power spectrum will be uh, different because uh, uh, the evolution in the universe is different. That's right. Uh, when we get uh, this power spectrum, we include exactly the value of uh, lambda term uh, from uh, the uh, last observations. Hmm. Okay. And last uh, observation, uh, the standard model, it's uh, lambda positive, and uh, mm. it's more or less definite value. So to perform calculation of the simulation, we need uh, these values. We need okay. values for uh, energy density, we need values for lambda term, okay? we include it for calculation, but for equation, it doesn't matter, it's just the lattice, nothing more. Okay, okay, because yeah, I think uh, this, this like initial uh, values we can also get an ADS CFT from uh, like corresponding models on the CFT side. Yeah. So this was, was, was more or less the question, oh, yeah. but, but it's fine. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, um, if there's no other question, I would, uh, I would like to close the seminar and I thank you again, uh, uh, Sasha, for giving us this, this really, really nice talk. And uh, if you see him, uh, just approach him, ask him questions about these things. I think this is an awesome, awesome theory. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.